Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. It's just me today. Dan's not here, but we have a fantastic guest, Jack from Jack's Meat Shack, is talking to us about his well new career in barbecue. Um, so without much further ado, here's Jack. Welcome, Jack. It's fantastic to have you on the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. Uh, for, for everyone listening, pl- please introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Jack, aka Jack's Meat Shack, and I suppose I am best known for my Instagram account. Um, so, yeah, that's my sort of claim to Instagram fame is that I started it about six years ago and it's got like quite a decent following now, I suppose, nearly enough 32,000. Um, but I do brand ambassadorship for Kamado Joe and Traeger Grills and I've just started doing classes with Barbecue Land and Hitchin. Um, I've been doing stuff with them for about the last four years really so it's, it's finally good to be able to actually do classes because the pandemic like put a massive spanner in the works when it comes to you know actually physically seeing people yeah so. So I suppose for you then probably because of that Instagram was the best way for you to kind of get out in front of people and and then show show what you know all the cooking that you're doing oh massively it was the, it was the only way wasn't it really to to meet anybody to be honest and i think for that first year 2020 wasn't it when it actually kicked off the pandemic like i can count on one hand how many people i saw i mean i was lucky enough that the job i was in um so i was i was up until july this year i was in the police so oh, okay. i was like one of the like you know we one of the sort of main sort of people that could go out and about so I was lucky enough to actually be able to go into work and see other people other than my family which was you know a bit of a bit of a reprieve really but um I mean we had our daughter during the the pandemic so she was born um St Patrick's Day and then the pandemic kicked off like the full lockdown was a week later so we had a week of where we could see people a bit of normality and then next thing you know it was like didn't see anyone for 12 weeks so yeah, that year was bizarre, very bizarre. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, when you said obviously you started that Instagram page about six years ago, uh, and obviously congratulations on a healthy thirty-two thousand, <laughs> your thirty to thirty-two thousand following. Did did you kind of expect expect it to kind of go that way? Did you? you know, no, it's it's quite, quite quite big numbers, isn't it? Yeah, you know what? It was started basically as a joke. Like I had a personal Instagram page that had like. 300 followers and I'd always been into barbecue like I always been to like cooking outdoors there was no like level of skill to what I did it was like you know getting friends together watch a bit of like UFC get some steak on the barbecue like all weathers that was I think we just did it no matter what snow rain whatever we just did barbecuing and then when I started the Instagram account it was just my own and I changed the name to Jack's Meat Shack because a bit of a joke um because we'd always be the sort of household that would cook for people like so everyone would come to us and we'd do the dinners and all that sort of stuff and then from that it just kind of took off I suppose I mean the first kind of company that I did any like collaboration and I'm doing like quotation marks here was Traeger like Traeger UK um I actually bought my first Traeger after speaking to the guys on the Instagram page, they did me like a, a deal where it was like that cost basically. So I went to Riverside, bought it, yeah. met Russell, who was at the time like manager of Riverside. He was mega into his barbecue. And from that, it just kind of, I suppose that was my like introduction into the community of barbecuing. Yeah. What, um, what, what Traeger is it that you're, you're currently working with? I've got the Timberline 850 and the Ranger. Oh, okay. So the new Timberline. Yeah, the D2 model. So it gets, uh, gets hotter a little bit quicker. I think the, I don't, you know, I'm not going to fully understand the science, but the, yeah, the, the fat <laughs> works a little bit quicker. The motor's a little bit faster. But um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen a lot around the, the sort of new, the new one uh, over the last six months. It, again, it just seems to have so many people have invested into, into that new model, that new range. 
Yeah, you know what? I suppose it's like it's like anything, isn't it? It's the evolution of the the brand. So even like Kamada, for example, they've got the classic three now, which has got all the innovations on it that the classic one just doesn't have. So I suppose Traeger is the same. Like they will always try and better themselves with the next sort of you know release. And then now we've got the Timberline XLs, or I think that's what they're called. Then you know the ones with the like induction burner on the side. It's all like I've like, seen this, yeah. Like, like like you know, best part of. I think like five grand in America, five thousand dollars. So God knows that much wow. over it. But it's like a lifestyle piece. It's not, you know, a typical barbecue. It's, it's got everything you can ever need with it. You know, it's got storage cupboards. It's got the burner with an induction plate on the side. You know, you could basically, if you had a, an outdoor, I suppose, like for the American market, they got the weather where they can cook outside twenty four. You know, all year round. We unfortunately, yeah. You know, a bit of, a bit of bad weather in that every now and again that we do in the winter. <laughs> Some of yeah. the hardcore still go out and and grill, but um, yeah, I suppose if you've got the the out, an outdoor kitchen, that would be like pride of place in it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, and you obviously you you mentioned about the Camado as well. So you're part of the fire squad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, yeah. how long you've been kind of working with with Camado, Joe? You know what? It must be about four years now. Yeah, it must be because I met Ben. Um, Forte, who's the uh, global marketing manager, I met him in Camden. It must have been about 2019, 2018. So, yeah, from meeting him, he basically said, oh, do you want to come along and help me do a, a demo? And I think I went to Bedfordshire Barbecue first time and like helped him out, basically. I was like, he's sous chef, like dog spotty, do you know what I mean? Like, do this. <laughs> Best that lime, chop that ginger, do you know what I mean? And then... Yeah. Um, from that, he was like, oh, do you fancy doing one of these yourself? And I was like, well, I haven't even got a Camado. He's like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort something out for you. So, yeah, from that, got the got the classic two and then just fell in love with it. Yeah, it's such a different style of cooking because I was like a Weber guy. That was my, that's why I started my account. My yeah. um, my first barbecue I ever bought was a 47 kettle, you know, the smaller ones, which I still have. It's about, that's about 15 years old. But then the first like proper barbecue I bought was a, a Weber Summit. And that was like my introduction. That's what the sort of Instagram account was born from, was that grill. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I love that. That's a great grill. Like, Weber, I don't know what's, what the new ver new version of it is, is like, but the old version, the old Summit is, is ace. It's really, really good. I, I did ponder on a, a Summit for a little while. Um, I've, got, I've, I've got the 57 kettle, which I've had for the best part of 10 years. And... You know they're they're obviously fantastically built and they last they last don't they as well which yeah. is which is great but yeah there was something about the summit that that was that was pretty enticing but I, I ended up choosing not to go with it but what um again do you do you find that it that it compares to things like the Camados and I mean you can't really like it's because it's not ceramic you don't get that I think the ceramic is almost give like a certain taste and a certain sort of smokiness to the food that uh, the, the summit doesn't but if you're like looking to buy a grill that is under i think they're the, about a thousand pounds are the new summit charcoals if you're looking to spend a thousand pound on a grill that is got a, a 60 centimeter cooking surface and basically acts like a Kamado style that well it is isn't it? it's, a, it's a Kamado style grill the summit yeah. is wicked you know that space you know you'd struggle to get I mean, even the, the 57 cow is is limited, isn't it, with what you use it for? But the, the Weber Summit is, yeah, that's, that's a good old bit of surface to cook for people on. Yeah, definitely. I, <clears throat> have you ever seen, have you seen the ranch ones? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've wanted one ever so I've long. I've never seen like, that big. It? <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. The, the Timberland 1300, isn't it? Like, what what could you put on that? Like, not being afraid, if you put one chicken on that, it looks a bit lonely. It's like putting a bloody... <laughs> You know, chicken in a phone box, it's like massive. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So just out of interest then, obviously, you mentioned that you were in the police force, you know, kind of uh, up up until recently. Uh, does that mean you're kind of moving towards barbecue more full time now? Yeah, that was, you know, not that it was like my, you know, I'd always dreamed of maybe doing this, whatever this is, I do um, full time. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's scary. Like, I'm not being funny. Like, I've been in the police 15 years. So 
three years as a PCSO and 12 years as a PC in Hackney. And, you know, I made no, you know, no secret of the fact that I love barbecuing and, you know, that was how I spent all my spare time. Like literally the hours I did allowed me to get home at like 2.30 every day to, you know, get outside, do barbecue and all things like that. Um, and yeah, everyone was always saying, oh, are you going to leave the place to do this full time? It's like, uh, and then when I, you know, started the account, there was no way I could do it. But then a few things <laughs> yeah. happened towards the end of, well, beginning of this year that basically meant that I could earn equal to what I was earning in the police, if not more, doing, you know, sort of yeah. barbecuing events. I mean, digital content, I suppose, is my main thing I do now for companies and and brands and bits and pieces and you know it's just given me more time to explore opportunity like the classes at barbecue land they they're you know always going to be on a Saturday because you know that's like when most people want to do a class isn't on a Saturday but it meant having to work in the week till like Friday do the class on the Saturday but now we can develop like a better syllabus we can do classes on a weekday we can do evenings and all these opportunities basically and that are there and especially events like when the world opened back up like after covid like everyone just wanted to do something outside like so solex for example did that this year it's the first yeah. time they've done an outdoor cooking area at solex before that it was all indoors and whether or not that's had something to do with the fact that people just wanted to meet each other because that's the thing and it? it's like social currency people just like to chat about barbecue like you put you've got a podcast about it you know what i mean you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So when people go out to an to a, like an exhibition and see like a you know a Traeger sitting there all shiny and new on the stand, they don't want to see that. They want to see it in action. So yeah, it was wicked to be part of that and have all these events sort of popping up on that. So yeah, it's been um it's been an Great. exciting year. If you said to me in January, oh by July you're going to be leaving the place to do this, I'd be like nah. But yeah, it happened. So <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Yeah, well, you've got certainly got a smile on your face about it. So I suppose they do say, don't they, if you uh, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'd love to talk to you about the uh, barbecue land and the events and the kind of you know what you're doing with those. I'll, I'll circle back to that in a second. Yes. But just kind of interested, obviously, you said you, you've been doing the the account side of things for six odd years, but you've always had an interest in barbecue, kind of. I suppose where did where did that start you know where I suppose being British most of us you know most of our parents might not have not necessarily been out barbecuing I know my parents were certainly indoor cooks all the time but you know where, where did you kind of get that inspiration to get out and cook on you know coal and fire you know what we had when I was at school so this is when I was in secondary school we had a, I had a group of friends who I still see now and one of them's um parents always used to barbecue so they always used to have like leftover barbecue in the fridge like sausage chicken and it always used to taste amazing so I suppose when we were old enough to like do it ourselves we just sort of started doing it ourselves and we'd always like go get the meat all go around someone's house like we all like I had the 47 centimeter kettle we had um my friend of mine had one of the you know the Weber uh what are they called performers with the ta like the the table next yes, to it yeah so he had that um and we just yeah we just used to like all gather around and just like spend a couple of quid and just get steaks and sausages and just like grill and then my other friend he started dating a girl whose dad was greek so we always just go around their house for barbecue as well so it's like all these things like were like almost like fan in the fire of my like interest in cooking outside and then yeah when i moved yeah. out of my parents house that's when i was like oh you know what? i'm gonna buy a smoker and that, the first smoker I ever bought was a Brinkman, um, like basically like a dustbin. It was like literally like 60 yeah. quid. And it basically literally had like no way to control the fire. You literally just had the fire at the bottom, the food at the top. And that was it. Like, just off you go. Like, so everything I did was like new. It's like when, when you smoked it, it was like mahogany brown because there's so much oak, oak smoke all over it. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I suppose the second barbecue I bought was a Swiss grill which was a really decent brand of like gas barbecue. So yeah, yeah. from that, yeah, it's just, you know, it's like you buy one and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to buy that and get that. And then, next thing you know, you've got like 13 of them in your garden. <laughs> yeah. And the problem is, it's like, where do you stop? It, when you run out of space. 
Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's the thing. Yeah, I'll, well, I moved house because I'd run out of space. <laughs> <laughs> so to be fair, but you know, I'm I'm the same. Uh, I was I was sort of talking to someone recently, and, and it was kind of, oh, I'm not I'm not sure I need anything kind of barbecue related at the moment. And then where we've had a break over the summer for rec from recording, and obviously I'm talking to you now, and we you know we've been starting to talk to a, a few other people for our season four. And all of a sudden, I've got the twitch again, and yeah. I found myself I found myself looking at barbecues the other night, just going, "Oh, yeah, I could probably buy that one." Well, I probably what's shouldn't. Your, what's but... on your wish list then? What's your like top three things if you could snap your fingers now and have? What would you have? Savage Savage Barbecues Fire Cage would be one. Yep. Uh, I, I quite like the Hellraiser. Yeah. Yeah. Quite nice, and I've always had an interest in the Yoda Wichita offset smoker that you'd have to get imported from America. It just yeah. looks a thing of beauty. So yeah, I think those those three would be at the top of my list. Um, yeah, obviously none of them cheap. <laughs> no, yeah, especially the the Wichita, yeah, bloody hell. I think they do them. Well, they do the Yoda at Barbecue Land. And they do the competition version of it, and it's like five and a half grand. And you're like, oh. yeah. But you know what? That's the mean. Like, someone's at somewhere. At, people out there have like got a love barbecue. You've got deep pockets, so they can buy things like that. So yeah, good luck <laughs> yeah, to them. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what would be what would be your uh, would be your top three on the wish list? Oh, you know what? I would really like to have a play with one of Somerset Grills, like a Sada type. You know, a Santa Maria type yeah. grill. I've not, I've yeah. not cooked on anything like that for years now. I did it at an event. So, yeah, something like that would be good. But Gosney Dome, I've not got one yet, but I've got access to one at Barbecue Land, and it's wicked. It's so, like, I, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's the fact that it's the, the brand has basically, like, infiltrated every aspect of life, so it's made it, like, the, the thing to have, like, but it yes. is. It backs it, do you know what I mean? It's not like something that's, like, once you get your hands on it, you're a bit, like, underwhelmed with it. It is that good, like the way it's designed, the way it heats up, it holds the heat really, really well. Yeah, that's that's um, I suppose second on my list. And like, yeah, like you, like um, I like the Yoda. They do a charcoal version with a big flat plate. Oh, okay, I haven't seen that. Like, no. Yeah, it's like the, it's a, they do a charcoal like grill, and it's got like the adjustable level of the the grate to rise, rise up to that. That'd be pretty cool, but. Yeah, the list is endless, isn't it? I could like rattle off loads of things I want. Essentially, what we all need to do is just everyone have their own barbecue store. Yeah, <laughs> or a warehouse yeah. or something that we could just yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, we could do it. <laughs> like so, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, a barbecue and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But <laughs> um, so barbecue land. So you you mentioned a couple of times. I say, hey, you've got access to the to, to the Gosney Dome, which you're completely correct. Gosney is, ev you know, it, it is just seems to be the brand of the just moment everywhere, it? isn't it? Yeah, you just yeah. can't escape it. Yeah. Funny enough, I was just I've just got back from taking my son to his football training, and I just got chatting to one of the, the dads on the team, um, and I'm wearing a barbecue hoodie, and he's we started talking about barbecue. He's got a rock box. Right. Uh, and again, just it, it, again, we were just having a very, very similar conversation that Gosney just, yeah, they're, they're almost kind of storming the pizza uh, uh, yeah, kind of scene like, at the minute. Almost come out of nowhere because rock boxes have been about for years, haven't they? Yes. And I don't ever remember there being this much buzz around like Gosney the brand, but you know, Tom, the founder of it, is obviously he's, his story is interesting. Like people just, buy into the brand so his story is interesting as it is like how he basically started it from scratch you know he's almost like Richard Branson-esque isn't it he's you know yeah. started from nothing and he's built into this like global you know juggernaut really so hats off to him yeah and it, 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 it helps that the grills or the, the, the ovens haven't changed as well so the rock box that's yes, the original design so it's not yeah. changed it's not like you go out and have to buy the new version every couple of years it's like that's it that's, that's done yeah so again mark quality though isn't it as well yeah yeah you don't have to keep going out and buying the new ones and i think i suppose we've all been in those situations haven't we before where you, you know you go to your local diy store and you buy your 40 quid one and then you end up having to replace it after 
a couple of months because it's rusted through at the bottom. And... Yeah, buy a cheap, buy a twice. <laughs> that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, ha, ha, you, again, you, we're going, we'll go back to the barbecue land side of things. And, <laughs> we'll get there in the end. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We keep kind of we'll circling. Get but but uh, so obviously you, you're working with, with with them. Yep. Um, again, kind of what what, what, what is the what, what's the kind of ins and outs of that barbecue land partnership that you're doing? You've mentioned events, but is there other kind of elements to that? You know what? I suppose I am the social media manager. If, anything like i started by managing their instagram account years ago um because i think most people would agree like social media is a bit of a mystery to some people like they just don't get it do they like they just don't understand it so um i did my first Camaro demo at barbecue lands and then from that got chatting to richard the owner who obviously he's you know got a great business mind so he saw the um you know the the, the, the demos basically were a great way to entice people in because again you can show someone a barbecue in a showroom but what they really want to see is how it works what the food tastes like out of it so we basically just started doing demos and i did like maybe a few of those um every year with him and the talk was what's to do like classes so we started talking about doing classes a year before the pandemic hit but it was just like you know like when you try and do something but i was working he had other things in his mind. We just never got around to actually getting it off the ground. Yeah. Um, so then during lockdown, did all their social media stuff. We launched a YouTube channel. It was myself, um, <clears throat> Smoking Dan. He did some stuff for it. Paul Nylon. So, yeah, they've got a really great library of videos from a couple of different sort of barbecue chefs. Yeah. They've got about 100 videos on YouTube now. So it's a good place to go and, like, look at different techniques and stuff. And then barn so he built an extension this year in march it was finished he's built basically a massive barn at the back of all his showrooms it's where barbecue land is it's really it's on like a, a farm in hitchin little wymerley it's called okay um, so all the showrooms are like different little cabins but then at the back there was space and he's built like this massive purpose-built wooden barn so we've got a, a teaching area now like a you know weatherproof teaching area it's all got sink and plumbing and all that bits and pieces it's got fridges in there now so we've got a, an area where we can start doing classes so we started them about must have been about three months ago we've done Kamado we started off with like a Kamado basics class so yeah yeah it's just been really popular like we've had people all all different types of people come in to the school not just like hardcore barbecuers like you're talking people who've just bought one don't even know how to use it really but want to know a bit more and obviously they go like you know stuff that is fairly simple to me like smash burgers you show that to someone who's never done one that's like change their change their life they're like oh my god i can't believe this is how you would do one because to them they've always yeah someone said to me i can't remember who it was he was like oh yeah normally like get them this is like old school what my parents would do oh yeah get the mince mix the egg do the breadcrumb and i was like what like are you making meatballs <laughs> or a burger like what's going on but yeah just <laughs> yeah a different way of showing people how to to, to make you know simple ingredients really tasty and that's the whole thing in the class i don't want to like show people how to smoke a brisket for 12 hours because realistically most people aren't going to do that most people are going to get yeah. the three for ten from like tesco's or sainsbury's you know the mints or the chicken or you know the sausages and want to know how to do that well on their barbecue and that's kind of what we focus on yeah we do like reverse the tomahawks and stuff for a bit of sort of showing off but yeah the the main dishes we do are really simple stuff like rotisserie chicken you know simple technique but makes for lovely moist chicken there and every time we do it we show people the rotisserie chicken they like if they've not got rotisserie they go and buy one straight away because it's the best chicken they've ever had yeah and, and are you finding then that the people that are coming to to the the classes are more beginners or are you, are you finding that you are getting seasoned barbecuers that no, you know, they just want the opportunity to cook with you or everyone, everyone we've had is been newbies, like not, not part of the barbecue. So this is like what I would say, like one of the pitfalls of having like a, a fairly decent like Instagram following is doesn't mean you're going to automatically sell a product from that following. Yeah. So you can have like 50,000 followers. Doesn't mean you're going to make 50,000 sales of something you're trying to sell. Yeah. Same with the classes. I thought, oh, yeah, we'll get loads of people in. But realistically, everyone that sort of has a barbecue Instagram knows how to 
you know, do things like smash burgers, chicken wings, all that. So yeah. everyone we've had in has been like people who don't really know how to like grill and have bought or are thinking of buying a Kamado and wanted to see an action because you think you've got like four hours basically where you can have a play. I'll try and make it immersive so people can have a go at everything we do. You know, people have a go like butchering the chicken wings or like balling the mints, doing the smash burgers or, you know, reverse searing the steaks, it, like all the elements you can have a go at. Plus you get to like fire up the grills. We've got like seven Kamados we've got access to. So you can have a play on all of them. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a great little area where we can teach and show people how the grills work. We're doing pellet grill ones as well. So that's another like niche that people are not sure of. Oh, I don't even know what it is. What's, what's a pellet grill? Yeah, actually, I, again, talking to people that are not barbecuers, uh, talking about the Traeger. Yeah. If people don't know the Traeger brand and you're trying to explain to them where it's a wood pellet, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> It's, it's yeah, exactly. Yeah. That... yeah, yeah. Like, where do they go? Like, what's like, where? What you have to plug it in? Like, people get get confused, don't they? <laughs> do Do you find that quite rewarding, though? Obviously, you know, if if everyone is a newbie and they're you know they're in the process of looking at grills, potentially buying or just bought, do you kind of get quite a good you know level of satisfaction the fact that you're you're helping them on their journey in into barbecue? Oh, massively! Yeah, it's great. Like. There's nothing worse than having something like imagine spending like two grand on a Kamado, but then not using it to its full potential. Like being, you know, trying a couple of times to like get it going and being like, oh, you know what? I'm not, it's not for me. Pack it in. It's just simple yeah. stuff. Cause I suppose, you, you know, once you, it's like you buy it and then it's like the old, the old analogy, isn't it? Of like, you know, you don't, you don't learn to drive until you pass your test, all that sort of stuff. The same with barbecue, isn't it? I suppose you don't learn until you've made like numerous mistakes. And that's what I'm doing with people. I'm just like basically saying, I've started from the beginning. I've made loads of mistakes. But, you know, it's like, it's more technique, isn't it, than, than skill. If you can master things like the air control on a grill, like how to stabilise the temperature, then unless you're going to like fiddle with it, it will stay that temperature. And Kamado yeah. is designed to be almost like idiot proof. You've got deflector plates so you know if you couldn't say really fatty you don't have to worry about big flare-up fires and stuff so yeah it's they are like a good grill to teach on you've kind of almost segued into one of the things that we like to talk about about our barbecue fails about the many mistakes <laughs> do you want to share with us one of your barbecue fails oh how long you got jesus um <laughs> as long as you need like when I first started cooking, when I when I got my Weber Summit the first time, I didn't understand the fact that you basically get, I, I treated it like a Weber kettle. So I got like a whole chimney of charcoal, filled the grill with like lump of charcoal and just dumped like the lit chimney in the, in the grill. So it got to like 300 degrees Celsius. So I couldn't figure out how to like get the temperature down. So the brisket was like shoe leather at the end of it. <laughs> Um, I've got like a bit of a nemesis thing going with beef cheeks where I've tried them a couple of times and it just don't, they just don't come out how I want them like rock hard bullets. But, um, I'm one of these people that if I mess something up, I will just have to do it again and again until I get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Beef cheeks. So that's, that's an interesting thing. I'd spoken about it before cause that was one of my fails. Beef cheeks. Yeah. Mine came out like. I think where the fat had rendered, it it, it was almost like wallpaper paste. It was right. really gluey and glumpy, and it, it just it was not a good flavour or texture to have. Yeah. But you had said you, that yours were like rock hard, so it's interesting to. Uh, you know, fail, right, I, I fail, didn't. But I didn't wrap mine. I, I know, like now, you have to braise them in some sort of liquid to get them like that squidgy. That's the mistake yeah. I made. Like whether it be like a shallow braise. Because it's their, um, their, it's the collagen that you need to break down. So you need to take to that, like that higher temperature to get that collagen to break down. A bit like pulled pork, isn't it? So you need to like wrap them. Yeah. But yeah, oh, you know when you're just like, I did it twice. I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have, you, uh, have you had a good since? No, you know what? I haven't. I haven't done them for a while. Actually, I should do. Yeah, I've got some pig cheeks in the freezer. I might give them a go first. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same though. I kind of want to have another go just to, to to make sure that I can get them right. 
but I hate wasting money and I hate wasting food. So yeah. it's, it's like when you can't, when they're inedible, it's the worst feeling, isn't it? Yeah, when it, when when something can't be saved, you're like, oh, you know, yeah, and that, and that's you know what, that's what I was brisket is one of the things I like. I'll do it every now and again because it is good for a post. But realistically, I'm like, oh, it's such. If you like, if you mess it up, there's no saving it. You know, if you if you take it over, very hard to save. I mean, yeah, you can like use it in a stew or a chili or you know do it use it for someone else but yeah it's that like that window at the end isn't it? and your time has got to be spot on as well so if you want it for dinner you know you've got to start it really in the morning or the night before or yes yeah, it's, yeah. It's them danger danger well, well, yeah but it's the one that everyone kind of, you, again you were talking about newbies getting into in, into barbecue i think where there's such a still a such a, a heavy American influence, and yeah. you, know, if you go onto YouTube and you, you you look at American barbecue, brisket is still revered as the kind of the piece of meat to cook, isn't it? I understand oh, got, yeah. you know your ribs and that, but it's still brisket is the is the thing, and it is daunting, isn't it? The first time so, again, especially if you're not used to a barbecue or you're not you, you know you're not mastering those techniques that you were saying, it, it's it's a really complicated piece to try. Oh, massively. And, and as you just like touched on there, it's like that you need to have done a few of them to know, you know, like the phrase are probing like butter. Well, I'm not being funny. What does that even like? What does that mean? All these like terms that are thrown about. No, I'm, you know, the videos don't really explain what that actually means. As in like your meat should have very little resistance when you probe into it because you've wrapped it. It's like gone through the store, you know, all these, yeah, all this like terminology yeah, and, and briskets are like, people compare it to YouTube. So they'll see like someone do a brisket, an American like grain fed brisket, and it will have a lovely jiggle. It will be, you know, really moist, really fatty. But realistically, our meat over here is totally different. All of our cuts like are totally different to American meat. I mean, I, I, we're lucky enough, like my in-laws have got a house in California. So we go out, well, we haven't been out for a while, but we've been out probably about seven or eight times. And when we go to supermarkets, we can get these like massive steaks, like big fat ribeyes, like two inch thick, and they're like seven dollars. But it's all grain fed. Wow. I'll tell you what, like yeah. British British beef is the best in the world. I will always I will, that this is the hill I'll die on because having tasted stuff from around the world, like we just our stuff is more beefy, it's more like the fat is like a nice yellow. You know, we've got the best basically like ecosystem to grow amazing beef i mean have you tried meat matters stuff no i haven't no well honestly you need honestly treat yourself it's so good like ollie the guy that basically founds it he is like a savant when it comes to like aging meat so he won't let anything go unless it's like aged to his specification it's all like ex-dairy cow so the fat and it's beautifully marbled nice yellow it's like marbled throughout and it's really reasonably priced if you've been looking or thinking about an outdoor kitchen, then look no further than AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Their extensive showroom is based just outside Bournemouth on the Dorset Hampshire border and as well as numerous in-store displays also features a live outdoor kitchen where they cook every week on Kamado grills, pizza ovens and all filmed and shown on YouTube. They offer a wealth of knowledge on how to transform your patio into the most incredible outdoor dining area with styles and options to suit every budget and you can guarantee they will be able to create something perfectly suited to you and your home. They stock and supply everything that you're going to need for outdoor cooking, including barbecues, Kamado ovens, pizza ovens, outdoor fridges, and every accessory that you would need to become the ultimate outdoor chef. So if you want to make yourself the envy of your friends and neighbours, get in touch with them today to arrange a consultation and take the first step in transforming your back garden into the most incredible entertainment space. Visit aoskitchens.co.uk well funny enough though you've literally so we spoke to genevieve taylor uh in in a previous episode and you've just mirrored exactly what she was saying about british beef yeah and, and how it just doesn't it, it it's head and shoulders above uh you know everyone else and again you're talking about the jiggle on the you know the u.s prime beef but it is fattier it's corn fed and you're not actually getting the quality the best quality of, of meat yeah exactly yeah you know what well, i don't know why we 
we don't sing about it more. Like, and then, but the thing is now, like with social media, there are like companies that are trying to push their sort of breed of beef a little bit more. So like Hereford beef, I've been doing some stuff with them. And then it's the Hereford beef count like board of, of like cattlemen who are funding it to like sing about the beef. And, you know, Hereford's near Wales, like again, beautiful green, you know, lush, land yeah. to graze on so all, all the beef is is epic and there's these little farms and pockets of like people all around the uk that are doing these amazing things not just beef like we've got the best that some of the best pork in the world some of the best turkeys you know like we don't sing about our produce enough so yeah youtube is a lot to answer when it comes to like barbecue and the the way we cook it, you know, like three, two, one on ribs, for example, that's, that's too long, six hours for, you know, baby back ribs that when we get them over here are thin and tiny, that's, that's well too much to cook them. But you're sticking to that recipe. You, That's what's going to put people off. Oh, I've done these for six hours and they're like, you know, dry as a bone and horrible. Also, it's an exceptional amount of butter and sugar that gets used in the three, two, one method as well, isn't it? If yeah, you think the sauce, yeah. the sugar, the butter, yeah. It's, it's mad. I, I I almost never do. Th I think I've done the three two method once. Yeah, I, did, I just don't kind of get involved in that at all. But it's, I, just, I suppose it's almost like a introduction to doing ribs because if you've never done it, that is a good way of getting your first cook underway, isn't it? Like smoking them, then wrapping them, then sourcing them. But realistically, as you progress, you will know the signs. Like you'll see a little bit of. The, the bone sort of exposed a little bit they think oh it's time to wrap yeah. now and then you you'll probe and think oh they're nearly at 90 degrees so i might as well take them out and glaze them so yeah it's just that introduction isn't it i just hate elitism yeah. in barbecue like, i hate you know pigeonholing people into like saying you've got to do it this way and that's it and if you do it any other way it's wrong well it's not that's not the case is it it's just like you might find a way that works for you if you do your ribs i don't know two hours and then one hour and then unwrap for 30 minutes that's that's fine isn't it it's, it's the way you like doing things yeah i couldn't agree more and also you know i think we all know once once you've started cooking meat a few times on the barbecue that no piece is never really identical no. and they you have to be able to adapt so you can never almost stick to the same tried and tested method every time because the meat won't let you do that most of the time yeah, is that like, like barbecuing outside is literally like a, you've got so many pitfalls, so many things that go wrong. Like, I'm not even funny. Whenever, whenever we do a barbecue at home, like my um, my wife's only really likes to eat chicken um, and sort of lean white meats. We've got my mother-in-law who is sometimes vegan. My my brother-in-law's vegan. My sister-in-law is sometimes vegan. So sometimes we, we do a barbecue and we're cooking. Like, I'm doing like about four different things, like four different dishes. And then people turn up late. So then you've got to like hold it back. And then, you know, people want to see what you're cooking. So you open the lid and all these like, you know, all these things like will mess with your cook basically. So you've got to like think on yeah. your feet. Then you've got a live fire to contend with as well. So all these different elements of barbecue. And that's why I love it. It's like so many things that can go wrong. It's like spinning plates. Sometimes you're like run over here, do this, change that, you know, get some more wood on then. You know, someone's turned up, oh, I've, got, oh, I've got to do this now, like, exciting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, again, the fact that we can talk about it and still get super excited talking about it, even though yeah. we're not actually doing it, I think that's a, just, a, I suppose, a testament to how much we all love barbecue. Yeah, it's um, just a nice way, I mean, just, a way of bringing people together. Yeah, uh, oh, 100%. I, I, I'm really interested to know what, what would you... I'd like to come onto your Instagram actually in a, in a minute, but what would you say is your favourite thing to cook on the barbecue? I like a good steak. I do like a good steak. Yeah, um, I probably Any particular type of steak. I'll probably go Cote de Boeuf over tomahawk, just because sometimes Cote de Boeuf is more easy to sort of manage on the grill. Like we've got when you've got a tomahawk, sometimes this that bone takes up a lot of space but he's a quite nice cool handle but yeah i, I love like i think ribeye is probably one of my favorite cuts so any form of ribeye whether it be coat de boeuf just normal ribeye you know um tomahawk yeah just simple like 
simple don't cover it loads of rub just like literally good salt sometimes i don't even salt it before and i just sear it and then salt it afterwards like let the meat speak for itself you don't it's hard isn't it like because you don't know what if you don't know what the beef tastes like how do you know how much salt to put on it so it's better to cook it first and then salt to taste afterwards that's what i like to do but then yeah it's, horses of course isn't it Sometimes I like to sort it before, you know. But yeah, let let the ingredients. Yeah, speak I it, yeah. yeah. And again, you were saying about it's no one way is the right way. It, it, it is what you've just said. Just again, is I suppose testament to that. And sometimes yeah. you might fancy a little bit of a rub just for a bit of flavour. Sometimes yeah. you won't. Sometimes you, you yeah. salt and pepper just does enough. I get people like I, I'm on TikTok now as well, and that's like fucking hell. That's another Jesus. That's like wild west and people so i think oh my god how are these people even got allowed to have phones let alone connections to the internet? Like, <laughs> dangerous and people are like you can only flip a steak once and i'm like what since what like who told like who told you that you know like Jesus. So the steak police apparently yeah do you know what i mean like everyone like it's their way or the highway and i'm like nah look you just you flip it as many times as you want until it's done like it won't make a difference like because i can remember that from old tv shows like, oh, like you've, you've got to only flip a steak once because then basically like the juices will sit in the middle and all this sort of stuff like come on <laughs> it's not true uh, yeah so uh, well maybe, maybe we touch a bit more on on, on tiktok but um <laughs> certainly your, in, your instagram so i noticed i think you're doing some turkey within the last few days yeah um I, a lot of it's almost like even a lot of kind of step-by-step -step guides aren't you in, in in a lot of the i suppose almost exclusively video content now certainly the majority of it is yeah you know what you've just got to basically give the instagram algorithm what it wants and at the minute reels are the favorite thing um i mean I, if i'm honest i like doing sort of longer form content more like youtube style tutorial videos like because for me i like to see how things are done like step by step and what i suppose what you've got to appreciate about instagram is it's a bit of a revolving door so you you you'll keep your core like following don't get me wrong like people that like you know i follow the same people who have followed them for years but realistically probably like 80 percent of your account is like a revolving door of people who haven't seen this stuff before so you know just because you've cooked turkey once doesn't mean you can't do it again like the next year and blah blah like people won't scroll back down your accounts like your 200th post and go oh he's already done that no. so yeah I, and i always like to try and get the turkey stuff done early because one we lose the the weather just goes doesn't it so october is a dodgy month where you're never really going to be able to cook outside unless you're lucky i mean we've had quite a nice october but i did all my turkey stuff in september when the weather was lovely and yeah, this year I wanted to show people like you can do it in a few different ways and like cost of living is a big thing. So one of yeah. the turkeys I've got to send, that's what I broke down into is different component parts. And basically with every part, I wanted to show people like you can use it for something. So rather than cooking your whole turkey on Christmas day and just using the leftovers for, like sandwiches, butcher it yourself, do the breasts or one breast on Christmas day with a leg. That's enough to feed like six people. And then that way you've got half of it left over so you can do maybe like something with the other breast and you something with the other leg you've got the wings like turkey wings are an, an amazing dish i love turkey wings they're so like underrated because they don't you don't really get them unless you go to like smithfield yeah. or a specialist butchers they're really hard to get but they're lovely and then the carcass as well like another thing like all i'm all about like no wastage so the carcass i, I basically roasted that up and made gravy out of it so like turkey gravy videos amazing. to come I was I noticed a lot of uh, a lot of your videos as well. There's always a cheeky bottle of uh, whiskey. Oh or, yeah, or Buff, yeah a Buffalo, Buffalo, Trace. Buffalo Trace. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did something with them. I've been doing I've been doing videos for them now for about eighteen months. So during lockdown, myself and Hillary from Barbecue Lads, we had a sizzling Saturdays like Instagram live show. So Instagram live was that at the time that was like the thing that everyone wanted to be on like that was what generated the most views and most sort of traffic to people's instagrams account but yeah. now instagram lives kind of dead in the water like no one's really sitting around looking at their phones 24 7 everyone's out back at work and all that 
So yeah. that was one of our like main sponsors for the show. So every Saturday we um, we did it every every other Saturday. So we had some sort of Buffalo Trace cocktail or drink or infused it into cooking. And again, the, the flavors of it just complement barbecue really, really well. So like that, like, you know, like brown sugar, vanilla, you know, like, you know, the like cinnamon type flavors like go really well with barbecue. It's a nice mix of so, coke as well for them on Friday. I was, I was just going to say how much of it actually gets used for barbecue and how much yeah. of it's just a ch cheeky drink on the side. I'll tell you what, when, we, when I first started doing something with them, we did a Father's Day shoot and they built a bar in my garden for me. So I've got like a, you know, like a, almost like a tiki hut bar that they built oh, for wow. this Father's Day shoot. And they were like, oh, it's yours to keep. And it's got optics. So I've got like three bottles of Buffalo Trace on the optics. So I like, I do the old, like, I get like, I'll tell you what it's really nice with, apple tires. Buffalo Trace and Apple Tires is ace. And they actually had that drink designed. So they, I didn't, this is like, barbecue is one thing, but getting into like drinks and cocktails and all that, they basically go to a company and say, look, we want you to like design drinks to go with Buffalo Trace. And they will have like mixologists taste it and complement the flavours. So basically the apple goes really well with like the toffee, like caramel flavours. So yeah, Apple yeah, Tires, wow. Buffalo Trace, loads of ice. That's an amazing drink. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's like a it's like a science lesson, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it comes yeah, to exactly. that type of thing. Yeah, like mixology, isn't like but again, really similar to barbecue. You build a drink the same way you would build like a layer of, you know, bark on a on a brisket. You will like put this in because it complements that. Like, say you do like a mustard glaze, then you do the rub, then you might do another rub on top of that because that like counteracts the other. Like very similar, like the 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 flavor profiling of the barbecue and cocktails yeah it just all goes hand in hand coffee's another one coffee goes really well with barbecue yeah, yeah. well we'd start to talk about ingredients uh and, and pairing so i think what would be quite good to now is move on to our barbecue bingo challenge where yeah. spin, uh, that wheel. Uh, spin that wheel but obviously our new part is that if you can think of an ingredient to add to the list for our next and that will go onto the list for uh, hopefully for our next guest to uh uh to to get so if you just bear me one second i'll share my screen hopefully you're not allergic to anything so nah. <gasps> Look at it. it's very high tech there's a lot of money gone into 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 this uh wheel i love it i'm trying to <laughs> i'm trying to read so we've got liver which was last week's guest. So that was left by uh, Neil from Gorilla Gorilla. Uh, we've got sumac that was left by Big Nose Barbecue, Chris. Um, ma maple and pecan ice cream that was left by David from Spice Punch. And then uh, we've just got some other bits and pieces, but we've got everything. So a bit of duck, sweet pastry, fish, whiskey, um, down to like mint, paella, those types of things. There is one really dish. Cool. That's not an ingredient. Well, it, there's a mix. Some, sometimes <laughs> it's an ingredient. Sometimes it's a dish. I'd say like ham, egg, and chips or something like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could do if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, so it could, yeah, as long as it's an ingredient or a dish that could that, that can be cooked. Um, right. But there is one called my signature dish, which is what your signature dish would be. So what what would you say you're famous for? Would it be the steaks? Yeah, I suppose steak is like one of the the main focuses of my page. It's hard though. I was that like, like really struggles to answer this question when someone says, "What's my signature?" My, we do it something. My wife watch like uh, Master Chef or something, and she goes, "Oh, what would you cook? Like, what would be your signature dish?" So, I don't know. Like, I do so many different things. How I do like chips? chicken. I love. I think chicken's really versatile, so you can do lots with chicken. Okay, so if it lands on my signature dish, it'll be something chicken-based? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, all right, well, we'll give it a spin, see what we get. Curry. The choice is yours. Lovely. What would, what would you say is your go-to curry? You know what, I love... Um... I love a biryani. If, I, if I'm getting it from the takeaway, I'll get a biryani. But at home, I always make a butter chicken 
curry with chicken thighs. I do like butter chicken. Yeah. Yeah. It's chicken thighs quite are, simple really to make. for curries. Yeah, chicken thighs are amazing. So, yeah. My, oh, okay. Well, yeah, that sounds... Expect that, a curry dish coming soon. Sounds good. Okay, so I'll add it straight to the list now. What would what would be the ingredient or dish that you'd want to, to add to the list for, uh, for the next guest? Oh, chocolate buttons. Okay, nice. Chocolate buttons. Right, that is added to the list. Love it. Yeah, because Great. Okay. desserts on a barbecue, like, I don't really see many people do it. So, yeah, why not? Good choice. I've got, I've yeah. got a massive sweet tooth. I love sweets. Yeah, chocolate, I, ice cream is my killer. <laughs> I mean, really? See, yeah, ice cream, cream is not, it's not something I, I particularly like, but I've, when it comes to like, sweets and chocolate, I'm like all over it. But yeah, ice cream, I'm never really... What's your go-to ice cream? Uh, I like rum and raisin ice cream or a pistachio ice cream. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I like this ice cream. Ice cream, I'm like, oh. What would be your favourite sweet? Like what would your go-to sweet? Oh, I love pick and mix. You know the but you know the buzz sweets you get from like the corner shop. They're yeah. like, like pink laces or like sour twists, all that sort of stuff. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I I really enjoy licorice comfort. Mm. Not many people do. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, licorice is one of the things like you used to get offered it at Christmas, you're like, oh, oh no, I love licorice. I think this is a first for the podcast, by the way. We're talking well, about well, sweets. Sweets. You know what? After yeah. like a day of doing barbecuing or demoing or classes, the last thing I want to eat when I get home is barbecue. So I normally <laughs> have like a stash of sweets or like chocolate in my car. So whenever I drive home, I've got like something sweet to like take that smoky, like, you know, yeah, barbecue flavour away and just have something like totally the opposite. Yeah, I completely get that. Yeah. I normally do that, but it's probably nine o'clock at night after I have been cooking all day. Like you said, you just want that, yeah. that sugar rush. Oh, yeah. So when I get off this, I'm going to go and have um, some peanut but peanut M&Ms and watch a bit of telly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't blame you. Well, look, I suppose what what can we expect for 20, 2023 from, from, from you, Jack? So it's exciting the, lined up. The, the next biggest thing for me is I'm finally relaunching my rubs. So I've got my own range of barbecue rubs that I've had. Oh, okay. I've had them for years. I've been, I must've been doing them now for about three years, maybe a little bit longer, actually. Um, must be close to four, but basically I've had, I had issues with the last company that did them for me and I haven't had any for, it must be getting on for 18 months i've not done a run for yeah a good 18 months and i always wanted to basically like rebrand and do them in shakers and have two sizes yeah. you know i very very much started as like making it myself in my kitchen and bagging it myself and selling it you know like hand you know my first order was to riverside and i hand bagged a hundred sachets of rub and it was like it took me right, a week, well, yeah. but it was like that's where it all started. Versus was in the kitchen. So yeah. now I've just basically I found a company that you know almost like we found each other. Really, like they um, approached me and said about doing a, cl a collaboration, and I was like, well, funny you mentioned. It. I'm looking for a firm to actually take over the whole production of it. So yeah. I've been told it's going to be 14th of November. They'll be available on Amazon. And we'll have two sizes. We'll have a large shaker, like 200, 230 gram, and a small, like 90 gram shaker. And it's the, the four core, no added sugar flavors. So all the rubs are no added sugar. Great. So, yeah, for, you know, high heat grilling, they're perfect because the sugar won't, you know, there's no, no sugar apart from what naturally occurs in the ingredients. So they won't, it won't yeah. burn. Obviously, yeah, it will if you, you know, expose it to super high heat, but realistically, it's not going to like, caramelize like the sugary rubs that you can get hold of but 
yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's can, can, a lot of time. Can, can you say what? Can you say what the flavors are? I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your rubs, yeah so. It's, um, so yeah, my um, my core range. So um, meat. The first one I ever created was meat dust, which is like an old school barbecue, like uh, fairly. It's not not very coarse at all. It's more like a like a powder, but it's what I would consider like old school barbecue, like loads of um, like cumin smoked paprika cayenne like salt pepper yeah. garlic like like a nice red color um good on everything really it's like a multi-purpose yeah. rub i've got like a version of ranch so like a dry ranch rub so like full of flavor like dill parsley salt pepper garlic i've got a cat it's called cowboy coffee which is like a coffee based rub so again beautiful for like slow cooks like brisket pork and we um the last one we developed is called Outlaw, and it's almost like um a sounds spicy. Yeah, no, you know what? It's like a it's like a few it's like a, almost like an Indian fusion. So it's like salt, pepper, garlic, turmeric, and oregano. It's really nice. It's, oh, it's, okay. really, it's really salty, so you have to use it quite sparingly. But it just really makes meat come alive, like because it's got that beautiful like yellowy um, turmeric in it, which is like quite earthy as anyway. It just balances yeah. really nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Like, the company I'm working with now, they, like, wouldn't basically get it underway until they had all the certificates and all the different ingredients were, like, sourced properly. So everything's going to yeah. be really, really nice. And, yeah, we're going to go live on Amazon being told the 14th of November. So by the time this airs, it might be out. So go and check Amazon. Yes, yes, do. Shameless plug, <laughs> there we well, this is the whole point. Yeah, get, get you on, talk talk about it. So that that's absolutely yeah. fine. A again, I think it's it's very much about promoting British barbecue in in all its forms, right? Yeah. So whether that's classes, rubs, sauces. Um, going back to YouTube, and we were saying you got you know you said that it's got a lot to answer for because it's all American based. I suppose what we just need to make sure is that there's more english and uk based channels promoting uk based yeah. butchery and, and and those types of things so yeah let, let shout about it all you need to <laughs> yeah exactly you know don't get me wrong i'm not trying to like poo poo other brands of rubs like especially if you get it from the states or whatever but having looked at some of the prices of things now like when they're because they're being imported in like i saw a company i think it was like a bottle of lanes or something in barbecue land it was like 20 quid it's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I was like, Jesus. But I suppose, yeah, like you're you're importing it in from America and Australia. I think it's I think it ladies is Australian. But yeah, like, you know, things are just more expensive nowadays. Like when I first started doing it, the the rubs I think were like eight ninety nine each. But now you're talking like three years on, things have gone up so much, like you're never gonna be able to do it for that anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's by the by, isn't it? Yeah. Um but yeah, the whole thing the whole thing of it is that there's no added sugar. So Really, what I'm aiming it for is people that are like on keto or diabetic or have a lot of health because that's basically why they come about. Like myself and my wife, we did the keto diet, but what we realized really quickly is we couldn't use any of the rubs we had in the cupboard because they're full of sugar. Yeah. So then what we basically did is like design rubs that didn't have any sugar, so we could use them on our food, and that's where meat dust was born. So that was like the first one, and then everything I've tried to do has been no added sugar. So. Yeah, you know, don't worry. I have sugar really, my yeah, stuff. It, 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 it would appeal to a wider audience than barbecue as well, wouldn't it? Again, if you are yeah, looking yeah. for people that are looking to be that he that healthier lifestyle, even if they're indoor cooking, but just want that flavour. Yeah, massively. And what we found is when we 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 started doing it, we got like a bit of a following from like the Weight Watchers community as well, because it's like noticing yeah. those sins. So all the um, because there's no added sugar, like you can use as much of it as you like. So yeah, the, the Weight Watchers crowd were really like big on it as well. But I've been getting emails from people saying, oh, when's it back in stock? And I'm like, I don't know. Like it's been a long time. And all the stuff that's gone on in the world has basically caused the the delays. It should have been ready in March this year, but it's just taken so long because the war in the Ukraine's affected stuff that you wouldn't, you know, appreciate. Like cumin apparently has been really hard to get hold of. Like no one can get hold of cumin anymore. Like, you know. So, yeah, finally, when the light is at the end of the tunnel, we're nearly there. Oh, excited. Fantastic. Well, is there anything else that we haven't spoken about so far that you wanted to, to, to tell our listeners? Um, not that I can think of, I suppose, yeah. Like, 
the main thing for me going on is like the yeah the barbecue land stuff's really taken off we've got a full calendar of classes now for next year i think we've got 25 classes i've got just started doing a pizza class as well so my first one's this saturday 29th so yeah it's, i think i think not many people know that barbecue land is there because it's where it is it's kind of tucked away yeah. um but yeah check it out because the school is epic they've got what's an amazing the web, what's the website barbecueland.co.uk and they've got an amazing as you say like a you know like a children's playground of you know grills like they've got offset smokers they've got kamados they've got you know pellet grills they've got all, all for you to go and look at he does stock a really like eclectic range of, of grills. Like, you know, some things I'm like, what's that? Where's that come from? Like, he's got this thing called a techno roast. You heard of these? No. It's a, it's a big, long, like, rotisserie, basically. So it holds 40 skewers, but only small. Wow. So they must, they only hold skewers about what? About three inches. But right. the motor basically turns all these 40 skewers at once. They're like big in, they're big in Italy. And they're like popular in street food, but what it comes with, well, I think you have to buy it. Is, is like a box, like a big, big metal box. And the idea is you put your base of the box at the bottom, and it's got like a hundred holes for your skewers. And then you put in like meat. And the, what they basically show on the um, the demo video is lamb breasts. So you pack it with lamb breast, this big box. Yeah. And then you put your skewers in the holes, a bit like kaplunk, you know, like where you like putting things in. <laughs> yes. Like yeah. that. You put your hundred skewers in and then you get your knife and you cut down the holes in the side, the slots. So then when you take the box away, you've got a hundred perfect skewers of lamb breast. Oh, wow. And then you put them in your rotisserie and they all turn at the same time. It's, it is like really. That like sounds you, pretty. That sounds pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I did a video. I did chicken fires because I thought I can't get hold of lamb breast, but I did it with chicken fries. It worked really well, and to see them all t like twiddling away at w once was like pretty. Yeah, pretty epic. Um, so yeah, he's got some weird stuff there, but yeah, it's um, it's definitely a place to to visit. Perfect. And and again, just just for for anyone that's perhaps not following you or, or you know hasn't seen you, where, where can where can they uh, see your content? So basically, all major platforms: Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, YouTube. All of my platforms are at Jack's Meat Shack. So yeah, if you haven't followed me or seen my stuff, check me out. It's pretty good, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> love that well thanks very much jack for, for coming on the podcast it's been great chat You're very and, welcome um who knows perhaps we'll uh we'll, we'll pop down into to barbecue land and, and run into you or, or catch up with you at a show obviously there's loads of barbecue festivals and things next year so um, yeah, on, yeah honestly good like, to, on good a, to meet on you in person um well i suppose i pro probably should let you get back to your uh, peanut m&ms and oh yeah that's it wicked mate it's been nice chatting no to you worries and you yeah i'll catch up with you soon cheers owen and that's it for another episode of the meet and greet barbecue podcast thanks so much for jack coming on and talking about his, his journey into barbecue his very successful instagram account and now what's taken him into a career in barbecue after after leaving the police force so as ever we want to hear from you we want to find out exactly what you've been up to, you know up to or you want us to talk about so please do get in contact through our uh, social media channels through the website meet and greet barbecue podcast uh, on our website we do have the meet and greet barbecue podcast store which has got the official merchandise uh, there's some affiliates that we're working with you know fantastic brands like thermopen uh, so please do you know go check that out and we'd love for you to be rocking the merch and seeing uh, seeing the meet and greet barbecue podcast uh, everywhere and until next time keep on grilling Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists.